A table is given here that shows us the data for 15 employees for the month of June 2002. It captures their earnings and the number of days they have worked in the month. The work has been classified into three kinds of operations, complex, medium and simple. Look at the left side of the table, total earnings. So an employee can earn for complex work, for medium work and for simple work. And the three together would make his total earnings. Likewise, if you look at the right side of the table, it captures the number of days on which an employee has worked on complex operations, medium operations and simple operations. And the sum of the three is the total number of days that he has worked in the month of June 2002. Look at employee number 2001147, the first one for example. He worked on complex operations for 3 days in the month and earned 82.98. He worked for 23 days on simple operations and earned 636.53. So he worked for a total of 26 days and earned a total of 719.51. We have also been told that despite working on an operation, an employee might not earn anything out of it if his or her efficiency does not match a certain level. For example, if you look at number 2, he has worked on the medium operations for 1.67 days. Still, the table does not show any earnings for him from this. So this was about the data. Now let's go to the questions. We need to find out the number of employees who have earned more than 50 rupees per day in complex operations. Let's start counting from the first employee. We will divide his earnings from the complex work by the number of days on which he has worked on complex operations. So in this case it would be 82.98 divided by 3.00. Now we don't need to find the exact number. We just need to check if this is above 50 or not. For this also most of the times we would not need to divide it. For example 3 into 50 is 150. So if the numerator is less than 150 it would not qualify the way it is in this case. Now we will do this exercise quickly for the rest of the employees as well. 51.53 divided by 3.33 less than 50 obviously. 171.1 divided by 5.50 less than 50. 100.47 divided by 6.00 less than 50. 594.43 divided by 9.67 this is greater than 50. Now for a number like this how do you calculate it very quickly. The denominator here is 9.67. Had it been 10, 50 times of 10 would have been 500. But this is less than 10. So 50 times of a number less than 10 would be less than 500. And the numerator is greater than 500. So the result has to be greater than 50. I hope you got the point. So this is the first employee that qualifies. Let's move forward. 89.7 divided by 8 less than 50. 472.31 divided by 1.39. Again greater than 50, much greater than 50. So it qualifies. 402.25 divided by 5.27, greater than 50, again qualifies. 576.57 divided by 21, it's less than 50. How do you multiply by 50 quickly? For example, in this case, it's 21, the denominator. 21 into 100, it's 2100, half of it would be the desired result. So in this case 2100 the half of it would be 1050 and the numerator is 576.57 so it's obviously much less than 50. Moving forward 286.48 divided by 8.38 again less than 50. 502.10 divided by 10 greater than 50 so it qualifies. 1303.88 divided by 25.5 greater than 50. So this is one of the values which was actually slightly close to 50. How do you do it? 25.5 into 100. So that gives us 2550. Half of it would be 1275. How much is the numerator? 1303.88. So it's greater than 50. So it qualifies. The next one. 1017.94 divided by 26. Less than 50. 46.56 divided by 2. Less than 50. 116.40 divided by 5.00. Again less than 50. 
So the ones highlighted with red are the only ones that have qualified. Let's count them quickly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the answer would be option 3. You need to remember that in a question like this, you have to count very quickly. You don't need to write all these values separately the way we did. You have to count from the table itself. We did this to make you understand the procedure of counting. Let's go to question number 2 now. In this, we need to count the number of employees who have earned more than rupees 600 in the month and whose attendance is more than 80%. There are 25 regular days in the month. So 80% attendance would be 20 days. We need to look at the two total columns. Let's start by checking for the first employee. His total earnings are 719.51. So that's more than 600. And he has worked for a total of 26 days. So that's more than 20. So he qualifies. So let's keep these cells highlighted. Now this is the way we proceed. In the earnings column, we will look for all the values that are greater than 600. If a value is greater than 600, then only we will go to the days column. Now the next value greater than 600 is 754.06. The number of days for this is 23. So this also qualifies. The next one is 1351. But here the number of days is 18. So it doesn't qualify. Go to the next one. 629 qualifies. 22 qualifies. So this would be counted. The next one. 1303 qualifies. 26. Okay. Again this would be counted. 1017. Okay. 26. Okay. Counted. 822. 21. Both okay. It will be counted. 1379 and 24. Again both values are okay. It would be counted. So we are left with these people. Let's count them quickly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the answer would be option 4, 7. Question number 3 asks us to find the person who has earned the maximum earnings per day in medium operations. It's talking about earnings per day. So we'll look at these two columns. Let's check the data for option number 1. 1, 2, 6, 2 and 19. Let's write it like this. The second one, 735 and 12. Third one, 117 and 8.5. The fourth one, 776 and 19. You must have realized that we have omitted the part after the decimal here. That's not really required. The values are not that close. Now we have to compare these four values and check which of the four is the highest. Once again, we would not do any exact calculations. Look at options 1 and 4. The denominator is the same and the numerator of 1 is higher. It means that 4 can be eliminated. So we are left with just the top 3. Now divide these quickly to find an approximate number. The first one would be around 66. The second around 61. And the third is very small. It's around 14. So very obviously our answer has to be option 1. Let's look at question number 4 now. In this question, we need to find the number of employees whose average earning per day in complex operations is more than average earning per day in medium operations. So we need to look only at those employees who have got some earning in both complex and medium operations. So the first one that we'll look at would be employee number 2001151, number 5 from the top. His earning per day for complex operations is 594 divided by 9.67. And let's look at medium operations. His earning per day is 159 divided by 13.33. We need to compare the two. If the left one is higher, then this guy qualifies. Again, look at these numbers. The denominator is lower for the left one and the numerator is higher. So do we need to calculate anything? Absolutely not. The left one is much higher. It qualifies. 472 and 1.39. Compared with 109 and 9.61. Again the same logic as the previous one. It qualifies. 402 divided by 5.27. Compared with 735 divided by 12.07. The left one is again higher. So it qualifies again. 286 divided by 8.38. Compared with 6.10 divided by 4.25. The left one is again much much higher. Qualifies. 512 divided by 10 compared with 117 divided by 8.5. The left one is again higher. 46 divided by 2 compared with 776 divided by 19. 
the first one in which the right one is higher now the last value to compare 116 divided by 5 compared with 1262 divided by 19 again the right one is higher you must have realized by now that though this table looks intimidating in terms of the numbers the data the type of the numbers but we actually did not require to calculate anything anywhere we could do all this just by approximations and this is what is required in all the di questions now let's count these employees who qualify the criteria and find our answer 1 2 3 4 5 so the answer would be option 3 5